Hello, and welcome to another episode of Recipe Club, the show where we take your beloved, cherished, precious home recipes, secularize them, and show them a dirty time. And... No, we, we, we cook your recipes as written, then we take them in multiple different directions. Today we have a very special episode. Not only do you have me, Chris Ying, and Dave Chang, but also world-class, world-renowned, world, -class, world Lee, chef Wiley Dufresne of Stretch Pizza in New York, who has given us his special holiday recipe for Parisian gnocchi. We're gonna make Wiley's recipe for Parisian gnocchi as written, and spoiler, it is pretty good. It is extraordinarily cheesy and very, very, very versatile, which is why we're gonna take his gnocchi recipe from Paris and take it on a vacation around the world. We're gonna go to Japan, we're gonna go to China, and we're gonna go all the way back to New York City. New York City! But before we get to those, let me show you how we make this the original way. Parisian gnocchi, the Wiley Dufresne way, starts with 450 grams of milk, that is whole milk, that you are gonna warm in a large saucepan, along with 100 grams of butter, that's almost an entire stick. I'm just gonna put the whole stick in there. Once the milk and butter have combined and come to the barest of boils, one might even say a simmer, you can add 300 grams of bread flour and start working that in along with nine grams of kosher salt. Conventional wisdom says that once the dough starts to look like dough and begins to leave a little bit of a film around the sides of the pan, it's ready to proceed to the next step. Dump it into the bowl of a stand mixer that's outfitted with a paddle attachment, uh, locking that down, starting it spinning, and adding 300 grams of Parmesan cheese grated. That is 300 grams. It's a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous amount of Parmesan cheese. Once the Parmesan has been incorporated and you make sure you sweep up any detritus around your stand mixer, you can start to work in the eggs six eggs or 300 grams worth of eggs to be precise. Add them one at a time to the pan, let that come together. You don't wanna add the eggs immediately after the dough comes out of the hot pan because you don't want scrambled eggs mixed with dough. You want to let some of that steam out, which is why I added the Parmesan cheese first. So once the eggs are incorporated, it is going to look an awful lot like dough and it is going to smell incredibly delicious. And while I cannot legally recommend that you eat this dough raw, you know, who's watching? So this is the first time in the Major Domo studio kitchen that I have actually had a pastry bag. Uh, people were complaining that I was using a Ziploc bag when I could just run down to the store and buy a pastry bag. So I did, and I outfitted it with a tiny tip. And uh, let's see what happens here. So. Tiny tip, real pastry bag. I'm using an offset spatula to slice my gnocchi into the hot water. And it's going pretty well until it isn't. And I had an explosion, blew it O-ring, lost the whole bag. So started again with a different pastry bag and a much bigger tip, which, you know, frankly, these are of more gnocchi size. I think this is the size that Wiley uses, but I was not crazy about the sort of um, corduroy effect. So I switched to yet another bag with no tip attached. And you can see it's going pretty well. I'm liking this offset spatula method of getting them in there. I am in fact not happy with that size of gnocchi either. So I have proceeded once again to swap pastry bags and find what I think is now the appropriate size for these gnocchi, AKA the size of a gnocchi. Regardless of which bag size or tip you use, the idea remains the same. You want to slice these in, but not so many that you're gonna have them cooking at different times and temperatures. Maybe spend 30 seconds to a minute slicing in a batch of gnocchi and let them cook. They're gonna float to tell you they are done. It probably takes two minutes tops and you're gonna deposit those onto a well-oiled, well-lubed sheet pan to await further cooking. Once your gnocchi have all been boiled, you can choose any number of directions to 
cook them. The classic direction is just in some browned butter. You can see I'm gonna add all the gnocchi regardless of what size and shape they were originally, just because no gnocchi left behind. That's what my tattoo says at least. Toss those in the pan and let them cook. Let them get nice and brown, a little toasty. You're not necessarily making these crisp, but you want them to have a little bit of color. That's the difference between this and, you know, an Italian gnocchi in addition to all sorts of different things. Uh, so this is simple. Butter, a few twists of fresh cracked black pepper, and maybe a sprinkling of Parmesan if you're feeling like it. I'm not today. Dump that onto a plate and give it a sprinkle of finely diced chives and you're ready to dine Parisian style. All right, so Parisian gnocchi uh, as prescribed by Wiley Dufresne. My God, it's hard to, it's hard to explain how savory and delightful these are. Paris has given us a lot of great things over the years. That tower, that one bridge where you hang the locks on it. I got engaged in Paris, but I think in the order of great contributions from Paris, it's gotta be Parisian Yoki, my marriage, then probably that bridge. Um, these are amazing. Such a good, insanely crazy recipe, and I think pretty versatile. So, we're gonna see if we can push this in a few different wild directions and find out what happens when you take this very strong base recipe that I think Wiley has shared a few places and screw around with it. So that's all coming up right now. Okay, so for our first variation, we're gonna take the flight from Paris to Beijing uh, and I will be your captain on this flight across the world. We're gonna take the Parisian gnocchi and we're gonna turn it into a Chinese celebratory dish. Hey, it's Chris. I'm here in the Major Domo studio, and I'm going to make Wiley's Parisian gnocchi, except I'm gonna make them Chinese. Uh, as a jumping off point, there is surprisingly, or not, a Chinese dish that bears some pretty close resemblance to Parisian gnocchi. So uh, they, it's called Guda, and it is like a flower ball. I, I just want to admit that I had no idea how to pronounce the name of this Chinese dish until five seconds before I started talking in this video. I don't speak Chinese that well. So basically my plan to turn Wiley's holiday Parisian gnocchi into a Chris Ying Chinese holiday gnocchi is to make his gnocchi as faithfully as possible, which I've never done, uh, and then stir fry it with some Chinese stuff. All right, so I'm gonna sort of work this in reverse order from how this would work. I, it looks like it, but I did not throw away that chicken tenderloin. I just set it aside for later use. And this is one big chicken breast. One very voluptuous, big bosomed chicken. This is how my parents would basically prepare every meat for a stir fry, the same stuff. So a little salt and a little soy sauce, a little bit of MSG, Shaoxing wine, a little sesame oil, a little sugar in the form of agave here. Oh God, oyster sauce. It's probably a little more than I wanted. Just a tiny bit of white pepper and cornstarch. Kind of acts as like a coating, I think, to keep the moisture in. All right, so I'm feeling kind of freaked out about how this is all gonna go. Like I said, I think it's gonna go quick. So I'm gonna do what my parents always did when they were making a stir fry, which is to sort of make your sauce ahead of time. So, soy sauce, a little sesame oil, white pepper. I think a good amount of white pepper. A little more soy sauce. Uh, oyster. A little shushing wine. This is not really a move my parents did, but I like it. A little bit of chicken bouillon and a little water. Pretty good. 
uh, and this is gonna thicken it. So I just have to make sure I give it a nice stir before we use the sauce. But this is, this is totally hacky. This is not how you would do it <laughs> for real life. But this is how my parents made stir fries. I'm gonna do a zucchini. Let me get everything else ready to go. We've got some already sliced shiitake mushrooms here. And then I got some peas and carrots in the freezer. Ordinarily I'd have some ginger or some garlic too, but all I could find was ginger today. So this is all gonna go quick, like I said. So I don't wanna screw around too much. You know what? Let's do the gnocchi. Then the stir fry, right? Let's cut right there. I'm very much trying to avoid making these gnocchi because I'm really nervous about it. Into boiling water. Cut. Oh my God. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, hold on a second. No, I'm just trying to, um, this bag burst. All right, so disaster is striking over here. Let me try a smaller bag. I made the Parisian yogi basically exactly as the original recipe describes. You don't need to see me do it again. The only difference was I cut them a little smaller so they're like uh, small marble sized. All right, so I have all of our little Parisian gnocchi that I'm gonna turn into Beijing gnocchi here. Pretty delightful. I got all my stuff prepped. I need to go kind of quickly. I found this pork fat in the fridge. Salt. Mushrooms. Tomato. Getting a good color on these little marshmallows. Where I reintroduce all the meat and veg. A little more white pepper. Beijing yogurt. I really cannot be mad at this. <laughs> it's just like a umami atom bomb. There's so much umami in this. This Parisian yoki dough recipe is outrageously delicious and done in this Chinese way. I feel extremely, extremely happy with this. Uh, man, who would have thought these worlds would have collided? But when you think about it, it makes sense. Chinese, like Northern Chinese food has this. This is a Parisian version of an Italian thing. Man, this is the whole world in a bowl. All right, so we just took the Parisian gnocchi to Beijing. Now we're gonna take a quick short hop across the sea of the China Sea, something like that, uh, to Tokyo, where Dave Chang is going to make a Japanese-ish version of the Parisian gnocchi using rice flour. Check it out. I have water boiling for the gnocchi itself, and I'm just gonna season that. A little presumptuous by me. This is about 100, one package of butter, half a package. So this is like 113 grams, about 100 grams of flour. That's pretty much what Wiley Dufresne's Parisian gnocchi recipe calls for, so I'm just gonna go for the same thing. This is Thai rice flour. Um, it's probably longer grain rice than the short grain rice that uh, uh, Korean pok or Japanese mochi is used with, but I'm just gonna roll with it because it's the only rice flour I have. Maybe a cup of whole milk. And I'm gonna bring this to a boil. I have a piece of shell, I'm just gonna go right in and use the shell. It's a really easy way of getting rid of a shell that cracks into your dough. 
Once we're adding the rice flour. This is the wrong tool, clearly. So eggs have a, a, a ton of water in it as well. So I, I have to sort of over index to make this more dry than I probably like. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna make the recipe as Wiley instructs. More rice flour. And I'm, I'm pretty sure most recipes use a stand mixer. Uh, I'm just gonna do this by hand. I'm gonna add the eggs. I could easily look this up on the internet. There's a good chance it already exists. But again, like I, I need to discover that for myself. Okay, I think this might work. Clean my hands, get reset up. I'm gonna make a sauce. I'm being extremely presumptuous that this is gonna work. So I'm gonna get some water, and these are, there's a lot of different versions of this. They're just dashi packs. In fact, this is so old that it's not really powder form anymore, but it'll work. Traditionally, when you have this dish, it's in like a butter sauce, or again, butter sauce with a mound of shaved Parmesan. We have some old Parmesan ends. I'm gonna add this guy to that. I'm just gonna cook this for like 10 minutes. While I start to cook this again, I'm gonna reduce this down and I'm gonna make a bourmonté, like a butter sauce. I'm gonna mount it with butter and I'm gonna set that aside. Hopefully this thing works. Pan fry them and then we'll make it. We'll make it together. And this is how you would roll a more traditional Italian gnocchi. And weirdly, it sort of looks and feels the same. So I feel all right about this. Let's just go. Oh, that's really good. Remove the dashi pack. Remove the Parmesan rind. And I'm gonna remove some of this. Maybe I'll add a little bit as we go, as I make the butter sauce. Moment of truth. They're floating, which is a good sign. Hey, that's sort of awesome. It's not terrible. It's actually pretty good. This is, I think it's gonna work. Stop the cooking. I don't know, this is like four tablespoons of butter. That's really good. I'm seasoning with a little pepper. I'm gonna add the tiniest bit of lemon juice. Again, I, I, I need, I love acid. That's it. I'm not, I don't want anyone to taste it. That was it. And that is nice. Brighten it up just a little bit. That's so good. some sesame seeds. And if I had some nice scallions, I probably would have done that too. And here we have it, Wiley Dufresne's Parisian gnocchi recipe inspired by Japanese Yoshoku cuisine, which is an amalgamation of a bunch of Western ideas. 
with rice flour. So this is gluten free. And uh, I gotta say, I'm really happy because the first time was literally one of the worst things I've ever made in my life. And this worked out great. That's good. Okay, so that was Dave Chang's surprising even to him successful attempt to make a gluten-free rice flour based Tokyo style Parisian gnocchi. The gluten-free part is very cool and that dashi butter sauce is very, very cool and very, very delicious. I can vouch for it personally. So hats off to you, Mr. Chang. Uh, coming up next, we are gonna see Wiley Dufresne take on the most difficult of the three tasks where the pizza man himself is going to try to turn Parisian gnocchi into a New York, <laughs> why do I keep saying New York like that? Get the f out of here. New York City style pizza. So that's coming up in just a second after this break. Okay, as promised, Wiley Dufresne is going to turn Parisian gnocchi into New York pizza. Uh? I don't know how he's gonna do it and I feel very happy that we asked him to, so. Let's have a look and see how Wiley fared. Hi, Wiley Dufresne here from Stretch Pizza. And today on Recipe Club, we are making Parisian gnocchi as pizza. Making a very traditional style Parisian gnocchi. So that starts with butter and milk. Oh my God, have I been saying Parisian wrong? Should I have been saying Parisian, not Parisian? We're gonna take our bread flour and just place it in a bowl. We're gonna add some garlic powder to it, a little bit of garlic powder. I'm gonna add a little bit of tomato powder to it. And then we're gonna lastly add a little bit of Italian seasoning. There's a bunch of dried herbs that are gonna really make this feel like you're in the pizzeria. Our milk's come up to a boil, so we're gonna add our flour all at once. Stir it up. Really the key to pot of choux is get, making sure, or Parisian gnocchi I should say, is making sure that your dough, your flour is completely cooked. If your dough gets to 170, then you know that your flour has been completely cooked. I'm just gonna grab our thermometer. Did you see that? Wiley Dufresne does not wear shoes in his house because he is a civilized human being. Okay, got our thermometer here, it's in our dough. Okay, we're well above 170. So we're gonna beat in some eggs, but because this mat mixture is pretty hot and we don't wanna scramble our eggs, we're gonna give it a second to just come down in temperature a hair. And one by one, we're gonna add our yolks. The important thing is making sure that you let all the yolk eggs completely incorporate before you add the next one. So now, we add our cheese. And now, we have our completed Parisian pizza gnocchi dough. This is the fun part. We're making gnocchi. In school, we were always taught to do this with a paring knife, but this technique, I think, is a bit cleaner, a bit quicker, a bit easier, and a lot more fun. Here, we're using fishing line. You can use rope, twine, whatever you have. We're gonna give them about two minutes in the water, and then they'll be done. You can see them floating in there. They look nice. Once they come up, you give them about a minute. And we have our gnocchi here, and we're just gonna saute them up, get them nice and crispy. That is the nice thing about Parisian gnocchi, so they get super crispy, and we have our Tomato sauce here, or pizza sauce. This is the classic stretch pizza sauce. Warming up. The nice thing about these gnocchi is today we seasoned them with garlic and dried Italian herbs and tomato powder, but you can put anything you want here. You can put black pepper in here and make a cacio e pepe. You can put nutmeg in here and stay more traditional French. There's sort of they're a blank slate and you can have some fun with it. And that's the great thing about Parisian yolk. You see that? They're nice and golden brown. We'll go right over here. Just put a little bit of tomato sauce in the bottom. Again, imagine, imagine this is a pizza. We're gonna put our gnocchi on in the plate. 
God, the smell is amazing. That's probably enough right there as an appetizer. So we're gonna hit it with a little bit of olive oil, like you finish a pizza. Here we have some breadcrumbs that are seasoned with brown butter solids. They're toasted, it's actually toasted panko. It's got some brown butter solids, some onion flakes, some garlic flakes, and some parsley in here, a little bit of lemon zest. Gives it some texture and some flavor. And then last, of course, but not least, you, we finish all of our pies at stretch with a little bit of fresh grated 18 month old Parmesan. And there it is. That is Parisian gnocchi as a pizza. It is always an incredible pleasure and honor to watch that man do his thing. Man, genius level stuff, reinterpreting, reflavoring the gnocchi to make it feel like a pizza. The freaking brown butter solid breadcrumbs on top at the very end. You can just like, I, I can feel the pizza vibes from across the country. Thank you, Wiley, for doing that. I think if we've proved anything today, we've proved that this recipe is incredibly versatile, but even if you just make the original Parisian gnocchi and serve it with some brown butter and some chives or whatever herbs you have, it is extraordinarily delicious, a really celebratory dish. I totally understand why Wiley serves this at the holidays, uh, but you can also do it Chinese style, you can do it Tokyo style, whatever you wanna do. Let us know in the comments section what you end up doing with this recipe. Thank you so much for watching Recipe Club. Plenty more to come. Please make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel so you never miss a single bit of Parisian content. This is the Parisian, <laughs> that's not a French accent. Make sure you subscribe to the Major Domo Media YouTube channel. Thank you once again, and we'll talk to you soon.